Hey, what's up everybody? Alright, so it's me, Harley Bliss, and today I'm finally getting to talk about Friday the 13th, Roseblood, directed by Peter Anthony, great dude, good friend of mine, damn good director, great actor, good stuntman. Alright, it's raining right now, outside, but you know what, I'm tired of fucking waiting to talk about this. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to go ahead and do it while I can, while I have the time to do it, while I'm in the mood to do this. Because my mood swings have been fucking every, all, everywhere, all over the fucking place, y'all. Like, it really has. Bipolar depression is no fucking joke. So, what I want to do, though, is instead of doing one long-winded video, I'm going to break this down into three parts. So, you know, just it'll all come together in the end but I can't just do like a long live stream or a long ass video because there's so much in this movie that happens there's so much to take in that it would take forever for me to put my fucking thoughts together so starting off with the beginning of the movie it has a strong opening it's very reminiscent and I'm sorry about the fucking rain but hopefully y'all can still hear me it's very reminiscent of the opening of part seven it starts off with a great voiceover that reminds you of Walt Gordon who played Crazy Ralph in the first Friday, and he is given a narration at the beginning of this, and you see Jason still trapped at the bottom of the lake at the end of part seven. So, you know, it starts out very strong, and then you cut to Dr. Cruz and Tina having their session, one of their old school therapy sessions, like they did in part seven. It's like this many years later, and it's current day Tina and current day Cruz, but. From the trailer when I seen it and they introduced the character of Dr. Cruz again, Bad News Cruz, I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? Like, there's no fucking way Dr. Cruz is still alive after what happened to him in part seven when he had guts fucking ripped out by Jason. And I was like, how the fuck does that, how the fuck is he still alive? And so basically it is what I thought it was going to be. And that is the fact that it's all in Tina's head. It's all in her fucking head, you know. He's not physically there. She manifests Dr. Cruz right in front of her the way any delusional, mentally ill person would do when they have delusions and illusions. So he's mentally there in her mind, and she can see him, she can hear him, but nobody else can. So if someone was to walk in her room while she's having one of her group therapy sessions with Dr. Cruz, they would not know he's even there. It would just look like her doing what I'm doing right now, looking at the fucking camera talking to it. And I was like, that's that's pretty cool. Because it makes more sense that way. You know, if they would have tried to write some cheap ass, dumb ass explanation of how he survived getting his guts ripped out, it would just it would have been too much. It would have been way too much. I mean I'm sure they could have came up with a clever way to write it in, but I'm glad that Cruz was only there in her mind. It made more sense that way. It was easier to digest as a viewer. But the things that Cruz says to her during their first little session right there, he's like, you know, you manifested a demon right before us, Tina. And pretty much, you know, he tells her, I only exist in your mind. I'm only here because of you. Pretty much. And she's just like sitting there so fed up with a shit. And she's doing a crossword puzzle. And he just really pissing her the fuck off at this point. And she's like, God damn it, I just wish you would fucking go. Leave me the fuck alone. Why are you still here? You're fucking dead. You died 30 years ago. And he's like, no, I only, only exist because of you, Tina. Finish the session, Tina! Fuck, I, I love that. That was great fucking acting by Terry Kaiser. I thought he performed very strongly. He reprised the role of Dr. Cruz exceptionally. He, he did a badass job. Terry, props to you, man. You, you brought it 150% of Dr. Cruz in that moment. And uh, it just goes to show that how fucked up and how damaged Tina is after the events of Part 7. And I thought that uh, Dr. Cruz played a great part at the beginning of this. And it was nice to see them two back together again on screen. Laura Park Lincoln, she's just as powerful as she was as Tina in Part 7, if not more powerful now. And her powers are definitely more powerful in this one. So it was great to see the uh, tension between Dr. Cruz and Tina once again. And I really love that. And if you pay attention to the props that are on the wall behind Dr. Cruz in the beginning of Roseblood, that's the exact pictures and props that were used in his room in uh, the Shepherd's home in Part 7. 
So before the fucking storm starts raining me completely fucking out, I'm gonna end this video and then I will get back to y'all with my uh, thoughts on the characters in this that I really like, I really enjoyed, and the gory ass fucking kills that I enjoyed the most. And I will cover that in the second part of this video of my breakdown review of Rose Club. So Peter, hang in there, bro. It, it, it's coming. It's gonna happen. But just for right now, this rain is getting a bit strong, and I don't want it to completely overshadow my voice. But the beginning of the movie, I fucking love. It had me. It, it just gravitated me into it. I really fucking enjoyed it. Seeing Tina and Cruz back together again, and knowing that he's only in her fucking mind. Badass shit, man. But I will get to y'all on the kills and the characters in the second part of this video. So, I will be back. I'll be back.